if you're a regular viewer of my channel watching my this day in history episodes you most likely already know that i've recently gone to playing reruns of previous episodes on the weekends because it does take several hours every day to create a new episode the actual talking into the microphone part of that process is the quickest and easiest part of it and the rest of it anywhere from four to eight hours in research writing and editing editing what i've written and then editing what i've recorded <laughs> oh and i will roll a rerun for you for september 2nd here in just a few minutes but, but first i want to tell you something we got a couple of milestones to celebrate one is that I recently reached 2,000 subscribers on this channel. Wow, you guys. <laughs> thank you so much. 2,000 subs. That's amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The second thing is that we're also celebrating an anniversary of sorts. It was on September 2nd, 2019, that I published the first video in the series that would become This Day in History. <laughs> As usual, I want to give you some backstory. <laughs> the genesis for a daily upload project was born of an idea about uploading a daily video, a vlog of sorts. I started that on January 1st, 2019 with a video called January 1st, 2019, hash day 100-day project day one. <laughs> that first video is still up there, although it's unlisted, which means you can only see it if you have a link but I'll include that link in case you want to see it. It's deadly dull. <laughs> but I've learned a few things in that hashtag 100 day project and in this day in history series. First being that if you think you want to be a content creator, the hardest part is sticking to whatever schedule you've given yourself. For my hashtag 100 day project, I was determined to give it a go, record and upload something every day for 100 days. And that's just a little bit over three months. That's not too overwhelming. In that series, I talked about really ordinary stuff like the weather and what I had planned to do on a given day and just stuff like that. I thought all that personal drivel would be excruciatingly boring to an audience, so I also looked for other things to talk about, like articles that I found interesting, helpful lessons that I've learned in life, errands, little projects around the house, gardening, and I even take my audience with me on a trip to Sarasota, Florida to see my dad for his 85th birthday. Some of those hashtag 100 day project videos are public and some of them are unlisted. But that process helped me get comfortable with turning on the camera and talking to it every day. Publishing a video every day, even though there were plenty of days my delivery was as stiff as cardboard, I have discovered I don't ad lib very well. <laughs> so sticking to my upload schedule has been the hardest part for me. Now, we're not talking about the most work, that's editing. The most work is editing and the hardest part is sticking to the schedule. I'm a person who typically speaks with a lot of pauses between words, so I've really had to work on that. And that's one of the reasons why I write everything down is, is right there. I don't have to think about it. The thinking's already been done. I write it all down. You could call it a report. I call it a script. It's a report, but I can read it for the camera or the microphone. I don't have to think about it. The thinking has already been done in the research and the writing. Whether I'm going on camera or audio only, recording is the easiest and most fun part for me. <laughs> it occurs to me that some folks might put these items in a completely different order, but there you go. So thank you for watching. Thank you for returning day after day. Thank you for allowing me this little indulgence of a prologue to today's rerun. <laughs> All righty then, here it is. Hi there, this is Monday, September 2, 2019, and I came across an article that I thought was interesting, so I thought I would share it with you. 
This is from History.com, This Day in History, for September 2. On this day in 1969, the first ATM opens for business. On September 2, 1969, America's first automatic teller machine, ATM, makes its public debut dispensing cash to customers at Chemical Bank in Rockville Center, New York. ATMs went on to revolutionize the banking industry, eliminating the need to visit a bank to conduct basic financial transactions. By the 1980s, these money machines had become widely popular and handled many of the functions previously performed by human tellers, such as check deposits and money transfers between accounts. Today, ATMs are as indispensable to most people as cell phones and email. Several inventors worked on early versions of a cash dispensing machine, but Don Wetzel, an executive at Docutel, a Dallas company that developed automated baggage handling equipment, is generally credited as coming up with the idea for the modern ATM. He reportedly conceived of this concept while waiting in line at the bank. The ATM that debuted in New York in 1969 was only able to give out cash, but in 1971, an ATM that could handle multiple functions, including providing customers account balances, was introduced. ATMs eventually expanded beyond the confines of banks and today can be found everywhere from gas stations to convenience stores to cruise ships. There's even an ATM at McMurdo Station in Antarctica. Non-banks lease the machines, so-called off-premises ATMs, or own them outright. Today, there are well over one million ATMs around the world, with a new one added approximately every five minutes. It's estimated, it says here, the exact verbiage is, it's estimated that more than 170 Americans over the age of 18 had an ATM card in 2005, but I think they might have meant 170 million. We'll have to follow that up. But anyway, a lot of people <laughs> over the age of 18 had an ATM card in 2005, 2005, and used it six to eight times a month. Not surprisingly, ATMs get their busiest workouts on Fridays. In the 1990s, banks began charging fees to use ATMs, a profitable move for them, an annoying one for consumers. Consumers were also faced with an increase in ATM crimes and scams. Robbers preyed on people using money machines in poorly lit or otherwise unsafe locations, and criminals also devised ways to steal customers' pins, personal identification numbers, even setting up fake money machines to capture the information. In response, city and state governments passed legislation such as New York's ATM Safety Act in 1996, which required banks to install such things as surveillance cameras, reflective mirrors, and locked entryways for their ATMs. This is from History.com, their This Day in History feature. Uh, they have several interesting items every day. That one really caught my eye. Let's see what else they have for this day in history. In 2013, Diana Nyad, aged 64 at the time, made a record swim from Cuba to Florida. I remember that. In 1996, Michael Jackson earned his 12th and final solo number one with You Are Not Alone. In 1945, Vietnam declares its independence from France. In 31 BC, the Battle of Actium. At the Battle of Actium, off the western coast of Greece, Roman leader Octavian wins a decisive victory against the forces of Roman Mark Anthony and Cleopatra, Queen of Egypt. And there's certainly more about that. Uh, 1945, Japan surrenders, bringing an end to World War II. In 1666, the Great Fire of London begins. Wow, yowza. In the early morning hours, the Great Fire of London breaks out in the house of King Charles II's 
baker on Pudding Lane near London Bridge, his baker's house. He was probably baking some early morning loaves. And the oven got away from him. I don't know. I wasn't there. Anyway, all these are things that happened on September 2 in various years, and so I encourage you to check out history.com and their This Day in History feature. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share. Yeah, that's it. The three things. Like, share, and subscribe. Awesome. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.